Okay, so today we're going to talk about arithmetic sequences. Arithmetic sequences use addition and subtraction to find the next term. So all of these uh, sequences for arithmetic are going either up or down by adding or subtracting. That's it. So there's not like weird ones. They have to be subtracting or adding by the same number every time. Okay, so this is the formula a sub n equals mn plus b. So this m and this b are very similar to our slope, our, our y-intercept formula. If you remember way back when, uh, y equals mx plus b. So notice the y would be our a sub n, and then we have our m and our n, which is going to be our term, and then our b, which is our beginning. So it's really similar, which is how we get the explicit formula, and that's why we have an m and a b, because it matches. Um, but for what we're doing, this thinking about our graph kind of relates because it's going up like it has the same slope every time. Um, but we're going to think about it just more in just um, what's happening to our numbers. So it's easier because the recursive formula uses a D if we change our M to a D. So we're all going to do that. So we're going to change our M letter to a D. Again, it will help you later. Okay, A sub N is the term's name or the term number. Okay, for example, if I had a sub 7, this cute little 7 there at the bottom, that means that it's the seventh term that we're talking about. Okay, the D is the common, it's called the common difference. This is what you're adding or subtracting by each time. Oops, sorry, excuse that. And there's just a couple of brief announcements. We have a company coming in to finish the blacktop on our cracks to seal it. We need everybody to move their cars from the north parking lot into the east or west parking lot. And they need to do that, you need to do that within the next 20 minutes because they will be here to finish it up. Also, if you are going home and need to go down or go west on 126, um, you will need to be detoured. So I would find a different way if you're going that way. Have a nice evening. Okay, sorry. Um, so the common difference is what you're adding or subtracting by each time. N is the term number. And B is the starting value. It's your, it's the beginning point. Um, and then here's, this is what it means. So we're trying to figure out what A sub zero is. So the number before we actually begin, because the first one, like this guy, number three, this is our A sub one. So we need A sub zero um, for our B. So our B is the same thing as A sub zero. Okay, so A sub zero, Again, just as a little reminder, we're going to go back one number from the first term. Okay, so let's put all of those things together. It sounds like a lot, but it's not really that bad. So what we're going to try and do is we have to first figure out if it's arithmetic. So we need to make sure that it's adding by the same amount every time or subtracting by the same amount every time. So to go from 3 to 5, I need to add 2. Well, that matches here. So to go from 5 to 7, I also have to add 2. And 7 and 9, I add 2. And 9 to 11, I also add 2. Okay, so every time I'm going to add 2, so that is my difference. I'm adding 2 every time. So um, I know that difference usually means subtraction, and this is a plus sign, so that can be kind of confusing. But in order to figure out that my number went from 3 to 5, I actually did 3 minus 5 in my head really quickly, and I got 2. So that's why it's called a common difference, because you subtract the numbers to figure out how much they changed. Okay, so we have D, and then we need our beginning number. Our beginning number is a number that would go before 3 in the sequence, and in this case, it just happens to be 1. So it's trying to figure out, if I had a number from starting here, what could I do to add what number if I added 2 to it, it would give me 3. And 1 
plus 2 is 3. So my beginning number is 1. Then I'm going to put those two pieces of information together to make my formula. So a sub n is equal to my d value, which is 2. And then I always put an n after it. And then I'm going to add my b, which is 1. So this is my formula. It's my explicit formula for this um, sequence. But we're going to keep going because a lot of times we want you to find a term. So we can use this formula to figure out what like the 15th or 1,000th or 50th or 100th term is. Um, and it makes it really nice instead of keeping to write out all of the, the sequence and then counting which ones we have. So we're going to figure out the 15th term. So the n, I'm replacing it with 15, which means in my formula I need to replace my n as well with my 15. So again, n goes out. 15 goes in its spot, and then I take this in out and I put 15 in this spot. So I have 2 times 15 plus 1. So 2 times 15 is 30 plus 1. So that means that my 15th term for this sequence is going to be 31. Now we're going to do the same thing on number 2. Um, we are going to figure out what's happening every time, so the common difference, and we need to figure out our beginning or our starting value. Okay, so go, to go from 36 to 32, we are subtracting 4 every time. So then 32 minus 4 is 28, 28 minus 4 is 24. So this pattern is correct, which means that it's an arithmetic, because we're going down every time by the same number. So my D is equal to negative 4. That's how much um, I'm adding or subtracting by each time. Now I need to figure out my B value. So my B value is the number that would be before 36 in the sequence. So this number has to be bigger than 36 because I'm subtracting every time. And when I take this number and subtract it by 4, I want to get 36. So I'm going to do the opposite when you go the opposite direction. I'm going to add 4 to 36. And then when I do that, I get 40. So my beginning number is 40. Then I need to write my formula. So a sub n equals my d, which is negative 4, times n, and then plus 40 at the end. Now, I also want to figure out my 15th term for this guy because um, that's what we do a lot of. So I'm going to write it over here, okay? So I'm going to do a sub 15 equals, and again, I'm going to take out my n and replace it with 15. So I need to do that on the, uh, the other side as well. So 4 times 15 plus 40. Oh, no, really tight. Okay, sorry. It's so little. All right, so then I have negative 4 times 15 which is negative 60, and then I'm going to add 40 to that, which gives me a negative 20. So a sub 15 is negative 20.